Hello walkers and welcome back to Italy. Today we are a little bit special place here outside of Naples. You may have guessed it already, but we are in Pompeii. My name is Henry. I will be your uh, proxy walker today, your co-discoverer, your co-explorer as we explore just a portion of these ruins in Pompeii. Right here, look at this. Tons of stuff like this. We're going to go out to one of the main commercial streets here. And uh, see what we can see. Check out the earlier video I did of Pompeii. We started at the other end of this place. Oh my gosh, it's crowded. So we're just going to kind of explore and we're going to poke our heads in to various places. I don't know what that's going to be yet. Uh, this place is so big and so vast. Like, look at this. Here's a little place. Um, and there's some really cool treats along the way in terms of mosaics and frescoes and interiors that we will see what we can. Uh, we'll go as long as the battery will last probably. And uh, check it out. So stick with me and let's see what we can find. Like I said, this is, um, I forget what they call it, Via del Abondanza. And it's apparently one of the main tourist drags here. It is 73 degrees Fahrenheit, 23 degrees Celsius at about, oh, here, let's go up here. You can see some of these frescoes that are still here. It's a 240, end of October. Look at these. Look at the colors and how vibrant they still are after uh, 2,000 years, literally. The eruption happened in 79 AD uh, in the fall. Uh, new information has been, has indicated. Uh, the, the history of the eruption is derived from a manuscript by Pliny the Younger. I believe Pliny the Elder died in the eruption. Um, there's in, uh, we took a tour this morning, and so pretty much most of what I'm going to tell you came from that tour. Sorry to uh, steal from our guide, but it's just a portion of what she shared with us. Definitely worth coming to see this place on your own and giving yourself plenty of time. It covers like 40 to 60 acres or something like that. And it's all these dense streets. Uh, look at this stuff. This is a pretty cool one. I saw this earlier. So this was like a tavern or something. Taberna di Sotericus. You see a dog, a fresco of a dog. Kind of right about there. This goes up. Is it? Lots of these little fountains, and apparently, each one of these fountains and each one of these areas had sort of a an icon. This is somebody, a god of wind or weather or something. <clears throat> I'm not up on my history. You can see these roads have these big chunks of rock in the middle, and that was both as a crossing, apparently, and as a block. You had to have a special chariot or cart that you had to pay extra for to ship stuff around inside the, the city. Casa del Frutetto. Scusa. Grazie. Ah, 
So a lot of these are supposed to be open to the public, but they are not. Isn't that amazing? How that's 2,000 years old. Just swing around. And so, oh my gosh, you can see how many people are here. We were told by our guide that it would thin out in the afternoon, but it certainly has not. Or maybe I should say not yet. They are open till 7. So there's that. I mean, seeing it like this, you can really kind of imagine what it was like. I mean, surely they'd have some oil lamps or something similar. But still, super cool. And we, I'll try to point out uh, some of the side streets that we're going to pass here. That, uh, let's go check this out. So this would have been the entry, the foyer, uh, first room, front room. And apparently these, they all have these little pools of the domus and they would collect rainwater there. It would drain down into a cistern. Oh, ooh, look at this. All right, so little loggia across the way here. It's so easy to get focused on the next thing that you forget to look at some of this stuff. Like looking up at that. Oh, it's behind a fence. Must not be doable. So. This is like the fourth side street we've done today. Another little snack bar. Places, I think, were for hot foods, I think. So the if you haven't watched a documentary on this, in 79 AD, Mount Vesuvius, which they considered um, the home of Bacchus, one of their protector gods, patron saint, if you will, um, began to rumble. Some people left, others did not. And this place was buried. Um, let's see if I can go over here. Sorry to spin you around like this. Um, they were buried by like 15 feet of They call that stuff. Not pyrite. Oh, wow. It's pumice stone, that's what I'm thinking of. Sorry about that. Um, I'm easily distracted, as you may find out if you watch more of these. Uh, yeah, like 15 feet of it, five meters. And then came, <laughs> in short order, a pyroclastic flow of hot ash and poisonous gases. So people were buried and then sealed um, and they left these sort of forms which is what one of the things Pompeii is famous for is these sort of figures frozen in time 
that's not actually their body, it's the form their body left uh, when the ash hardened. Oops. And um, then their bodies deteriorated and left this hollow form, kind of like, I don't know if you, when you were a kid, you made those paper mache, covered a balloon in paper mache, put string around it, that sort of thing, and then pop the balloon. A little bit like that. Um, and so what they've done Security there. Um, anyway, in the, since then they've gone in and they filled those forms with plaster, and the bones are still in there, but not the corpus. Um, try to get a better exposure here. Um, and so they have these forms, these sort of. Oh my gosh, every time I cross the street, there's something cool on the other side. Look at that. Casa degli Apidi. Apidi. Um, and so that's how they get those shapes. This is kind of the center of town, I believe. I'm going to go down this way because I haven't been down this way, I don't think. You can see some of the ruts in here, they say, are from use of chariots or wagons, that sort of thing, where they would uh, go on either side of these rocks. Now, some of these rocks are quite tall, which are... Uh, means the axle must have been quite tall, and I also have to kind of wonder how the horses handled it. There's another side street laid out. Everything's laid out on a grid. And you come along and you see these little things and these little houses, right? And each one is a little bit different. Some of them have more to offer than others. It's easy to gloss right by them, but they, it's kind of neat to see what they have to offer. Some of them you wouldn't think. And then all of a sudden you're in Casa de Sarico. And you're like, I think I'm going to go in there and find out what's going on.
love the way the light is streaming in to these places. I love that narrow gate, <laughs> iron door. Who'd have thought that would be anything special than a little sign? But super cool. Casa di Marco Lucrezio sulla Via Stabiana. you're enjoying this this is a lot of fun for me the lights getting better could be I can imagine for kids like that a very long day look at all the moss in this one and you think these little squares were all missed out on something. Seriously, you could take a week here if you were really into this. And obviously some of these are way better restored than others. But it's still really cool. And you start to get an idea of why it's so famous. And they haven't even excavated the whole thing, right? Like there's still a ton of it uh, that they're working on. Uh, it dates back to 2,700 years ago, or 700 AD, I think that is. Oh my gosh, look at all these little places, nooks and crannies to explore. 
So these signs, um, Reggio 7, Insular 4, that's kind of the block number. And that's how they navigate a little bit. Let's go down here. Primarily because the light's better. But who knows what we'll find. Sorry. So look at this little pipe there. They had running water in a lot of places, not necessarily inside, but certainly to the fountains. And they could flush out um, the sewers that would take animal waste and a lot of other detritus out of the city. Oh, look at that colorful, colorful, um, I don't know what it is, a little alcove back there. Beautiful. I wish you'd get closer to that. Looks like maybe some days you can. <clears throat> if you know the right people. Catch the right day. I mean the people who know <laughs> when it's open, I mean. Oh, hello. Another thing they had is, we were told today, a little factoid, the pipes were, I think, sealed with lead. They also used lead to sweeten their wine. Was that? Um, somehow, if you do that during the fermentation process, it uh, sweetens everything. I'm going to peek through here just because it looks really cool. Because Secret. People. <clears throat> Casa degli Amorini Dorati. Who knows what we'll find in here. We're going to look. Oh, this might be our ticket into Love it. See, just these random doors and you go in and you see things with amazing 
frescoes and rooms and columns and stuff. I love it. I'm so excited to share this with you guys. I'm stoked. this amazing frescoes here and there's one that I cannot show you because it is graphic content sorry about the spin maneuver there oh my gosh people I want to make my way uh, south here but it's conspiring against me. Sometimes we just have to backtrack, but then we get a view like this. So <clears throat> our guide was explaining that um, one of the reasons Pompeii was here in this location. I'm going to go in here real quick. I'll tell you that in a second. So, um, back to that, the uh, guide was saying that these mountain range here to the, I think this is actually south, uh, um, there's a mountain range there that goes out, runs out to the Sorrentine Peninsula, Sorrento, Malfi area, and to the north is a giant mountain that, uh, which is Mount, which is Vesuvius, also a volcano. Um, and they were, they operated as kind of walls and protection against invasion. Also, it was right on this sort of protected bay, which meant that it was a good place to have trade, have a port. This was a Roman colony at the time. sniffles. I guess I should get my directions correct. And all right, so this is kind of, this is west over here. So south and north is where those mountains are. Sorry about the squeak of the backpack. Not sure how to get rid of that. 
other than to hold it. Well, I guess it has quieted down on these side streets. Casa de la Caccia Antica. If you haven't, uh, if you want to, or if I missed anything, please point out things that I missed, things that would be helpful to other viewers as we walk through here. Yeah, I'm totally lost. This is famous. Yes, they used to do that as a way to show off their wealth. Sorry, I didn't give you more of a look at that. <clears throat> but I got to get going here.
Okay, I think, look at all this. We're gonna backtrack just a little bit here because I wanna go south. Here's the restaurant that was so crowded early, earlier, and looks like it still is. I will say they maintained a good positive attitude behind the counter. They were very pleasant and uh, mostly efficient. Scusa. Scusa, signore. Ah, grazie. Okay, walkers, thank you so much for joining us as we reach the end of our walk here at the Forum and the Temple of Jupiter off to our right. And we'll have a couple more looks here. But look at that low sun casting its shadows across the, casting shadows across the ruins of Pompeii. Isn't that romantic? Oh my gosh, you guys. Amazing. Thank you so much for joining me and helping me or allowing me to share this with you. I hope you enjoyed it. We're going to have more walks from Italy uh, in the coming weeks. So please, please stay tuned. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Comment. I love interacting with you guys if you've made it this far. Try clicking on one of these end screens that's about to pop up or has already popped up to see some of our other walks and check out virtual citywalksvirtualtours.com for uh, more curated and searchable walks by destination and by length. Thanks, Scott, and thanks a lot, and keep on stepping. <laughs>